Right, in this lesson we're going to talk about thirds of radicals. Okay, so I want to know what a third is. Because most people, because you probably have never heard of a third before and don't know what a third is. So what we could do is we can look at these numbers here. No, these ones on the top are rational. And this one here is rational. An irrational number is a decimal that goes on forever. So, for example, with just a bunch of random numbers, and it keeps going on forever. Okay, so that's what an irrational number is. A good example is pi that we have here. That's the one that goes on forever. And these root 2 and root 15 do. If you work them on out, out on a calculator, You'll get loads of decimal places and it'll just be an approximation, it won't be an exact answer. This one third here is what we call rational because that's equal to 0.33333 which is 0.3 return and write it like that by putting a dot above. An irrational no, no, no number is a number will have two whole numbers, m and n. And we can write this m by n, like that, where n is not equal to zero. This symbol means it's not equal to. Okay, so that's what rational and irrational numbers are. So, for example, it could be any of these fractions here. Two-thirds, six-elevenths, seven-thirds, two-and-a-half. All these are rational because they're written in the form m over n where m and n are integers. Okay, so that's the review for people who only took the intermediate because some people only take the intermediate to get on this course. Okay, so we've seen this rule last time when we're working out roots of fractions. For example, we've seen that we could write, rewrite that as and we'll get one answer like that. Okay? In this video I want to talk about these other three rules of thirds. Okay, first we're going to talk about this one. We'll call that number one, that number two, and that number three. So first we're going to look at one. Okay, so we've got the square root of 20. And it, according to this rule here, that can be rewritten as a square root of some number a times the square root of some number b. What we'll do here is we'll find the biggest square number that goes into 20. And that's 4. And 5 of them go into 20. So I'll rewrite that as root 4 times root 5. The square root of 4 is 2. So then I can write that as 2 root 5. Next one I've got the square root of 48. Look for the biggest square number that goes into 48. That's 16. And 3 16's go into 48. So the other one's going to be root 3. The square root of 16 is 4. So that can be rewritten as 4. Root 3. Okay. Next we're going to look at these last two rules. So I want to simplify 5 root 3 minus 2 root 3. Now it says here in rule 3, now if we've got some constant a times a root, b minus another constant c of the same root 
then that's equal to a minus c of the root. So, okay, by using this rule, we get that. You can say that's the same form as that, but in this case, a and c are numbers. And then we know that 5 minus 2 is 3, so we get 3, not 3, not 3. Okay. And next one here, I've got 7 root 2 plus 2 root 2. Using rule 2, I get that. Which one we add them, we get 9 root 2. Last two problems. We'll see these a lot next lesson. We need to be good at them when we do something called rationalising the denominator. Okay, so we know how to expand brackets. We multiply these first two. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Minus 2. Minus root 2 times root 3 is minus root 6. Then we've got root 3 times root 2, which is plus root 6. And that there is a minus 2. See here that these cancel. So then I'm left with 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. Okay, and if you remember from the, one of the earlier lessons, you should know that that is called the difference of two squares. From the earlier lesson when I was talking about removing brackets. Next one I want to do is I want to practice another one that with removing brackets. It's going to be this. So we'll multiply the root 5 by the root 4 first. When we do that we'll get root 20. Then want to multiply root 5 by 6, lots of root 2. Now, let's think about this. We know that root 5 times root 2 is root 10. We've got 6 lots of that. So that's 6 root 10. And that doesn't simplify. And if you like, you can rewrite the root 20 as 2 root 5, as we've seen earlier. So we'll answer this problem. When you remove the brackets, you'll be left with 2 root 5 plus 6 root 10. And also it's important to know that these rules will work for any power. So it'll work for, see we've got something like, These rules would still apply. And that would be the same for any root. So for the fourth root, a fifth root, a sixth root, whichever root, these third rules would still apply. But in C1, you're only going to work with square roots, so you won't see any of these types of thirds I have to work with them in the exam. Okay, and if you've got any questions, you can leave them on my video.